Welcome to the Meet at the Creek podcast mini-series, The Father, the Son-in-Law, and the Holy Ghost, where we will take you on a deep dive into the Bible stories to uncover new and inspiring details that you may have missed. And hello everybody and welcome into the Meet at the Creek spin-off series entitled The Father, the Son-in-Law, and the Holy Ghost. I am the Father. I am the Son-in-Law. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, so we're back here with episode number 10. Season 1, episode 10. Austin, have you put any thought into how we're going to be, how we're going to do these seasons and episodes? Well, I, I mean, as many episodes as it's going to take just for us to get through the <laughs> initial books, that might need to be a season all in itself. Yeah, I was thinking maybe for the overviews, we'll just title these season 1 and then whatever episodes they are. We'll start season two when we start going through the actual books themselves. And we we may even let all of those books just be their own season. I don't know. It just depends, I guess. Right. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Once we get into like some of your, especially some of your bigger books. Yeah. That it, it could take a while to get through all the important information in them. I remember a few years ago when I pastored in Tennessee at the Pine Grove, I did a Wednesday night series on book through the book of Genesis. And I want to say it took us two years and two months <laughs> <laughs> to preach all the way through Genesis. I'll try to make it a little shorter than that for the podcast, but no promises. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So episode number two or 10, excuse me, Lord, I'm still having trouble counting. Uh, <laughs> but today we're going to be just doing a brief overview again of first and second Chronicles. Uh, Man, I can't believe we're already here. But uh, first and second chronicles, just a little, just little tidbits of information here. That's all we're really doing in this uh, overview series. But first chronicles, second chronicles, respectively, twenty nine chapters, thirty six chapters, uh, was written around somewhere uh, between five twenty and four eight or four hundred BC. Five twenty. In 400 B.C. Now, for those of you that don't know what B.C. means, it means before Christ, obviously. Uh, you know, in the in school books, textbooks these days, they have what was called what's called B.C.E. and C.E. Uh, but uh, for theological purposes, we still go by B.C. before Christ, and then A.D., which is Anno Domini. I mean, is the year of our Lord. But anyway, that's the way it was until just about a decade or so ago. I have been doing it too long to change, so I'm not changing. But, uh, you know, some of you guys that finished school since that time, you've probably gotten used to that. I, however, have not uh, gotten used to that. But <clears throat> anyhow, the there are some things omitted uh, in the first, in the books of First and Second Chronicles, uh, but these books were written as a complement to the First and Second Kings and First and Second Samuel's writings. Uh, this is also kind of called the chronicle of the sacred history of all the sacred history. Uh, I know a few years ago when Natalie was really really young, she would read through. Uh, I gave her an easy to read version of the Bible. She was like in the first grade and she had read through that thing two or three times before she was in the fourth grade. And she would tell me about it and she would always tell me, you know, it's interesting. She said, but I always get confused in the, in the first, second uh, Kings, first, second Samuel, first, second Chronicles. And I, so what, I don't understand why she said, I said, it's just basically repeating them. She's like, exactly. She's like, you know, they're, they're kind of over, they kind of go over each other and like they say this and they say this and they say it a different way, but they mean the same thing. And I got confused and I'm like, okay, uh, I, I get it. I understand in her little mind mm -hmm. at that time, it was, uh, it was difficult for her, uh, a lot more than it was for me as an older man. But, uh, Hebrew tradition attributes authorship of the book of books of first second chronicles to uh, Esdras. But there are also 
controversies surrounding that. So it is, in fact, technically still an unknown author. All we have is hearsay, but some people say that it was him. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> awesome. Give us a summary of First Set Chronicles. So the summary, we've really broken it down into four parts over the two books here. So you first we have the genealogies of God's people, which starts in First Chronicles 1 through 9, about verse 34. And then we have the United Kingdom, which picks right up at First Chronicles 9.35, all the way into Second Chronicles 9 and 31. And then we have the kingdom divided, which is Second Chronicles 10 through 28, verse 27. And then right there, to finish up that last, the last few chapters of the book of Second Chronicles, we have the unified kingdoms, which is Second Chronicles 29 through 36, all the way through the end of that chapter. But we also have some important characters that we're going to see coming throughout the these couple of books here. And there there's some names that like like James has said that we're going to have that are kind of repeating from the previous books because they are overlapping and giving different perspectives of everything. But the four main characters that we're really going to see here are Solomon, Hezekiah, David, and Josiah. And as with everything, there's always a purpose to every book. And this book serves as a guide uh, to the restoration of the kingdom. Uh, this will be after the exile took place with a special emphasis on the unit unification of Israel and uh, the king and the temple and the immediate blessings and curses uh, that followed. Who, Austin, was First Set Chronicles written for? So it's it's said to be written for the Israelite community that returned from exile and they were aiming to meet their needs and encourage and guide all the readers while seeking the full restoration of the kingdom after the exile of Babylon. And like we've done with everything else, you know how big we are about seeing Jesus on every page kind of thing. So you'll be able to see Christ in First and Second Chronicles in a few places. The, the chronicler's focus was on God's people, God's the king that he established and the temple, the blessing, and the judgment is intended to bolster Israel's hope in the soon coming Messiah. And subsequently, all these aspects are fulfilled in Christ, every single one. And those who follow Christ are heirs to the promises that God had made to Israel. And another thing you'll see is that the hope of, or the hope for, excuse me, the restoration of David's throne was also fulfilled finally in Christ, who was actually the rightful heir because he was from the lineage in the line of David. So uh, that's just kind of a brief overview of First and Second Chronicles. Uh, that said, we're going to go ahead and hop right on in to the book of Ezra. What we're trying to do, guys, is we've sort of discovered that we want to hurry up and get to the stories. We're both... Yes chomping at the bits to get to the meat of these things. So we're we're going to kind of double up and knock out these <laughs> overviews, which means a little less talking about the overviews and more we, you know, get to the meat later on. So, uh, Austin, go ahead. We'll just hop right in. When was the book of Ezra written? So the book of Ezra dates back to about 430 B.C. to 400 B.C. And it's possible that it was written during the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas. And there will be 10 chapters in the book of Ezra. Uh, Jewish tradition attributes authorship to Ezra himself. Uh, however, some still consider the identity of the book of Ezra unknown. I subscribe to the fact that either Ezra or one of his scribes pinned this down he, he, if he didn't do it, somebody who was close to him did it at his, uh, you know, under his, he, he probably dictated it to him. So, mm -hmm. uh, who are some of the important characters in the book of Ezra? So we have a quite, a, we have five different main characters that we're going to see. And, and you're not, 
it's not the only names you'll see in Ezra, but it's some of the big names that you'll see. So bear with me because I might butcher the first name well, that I have. Well, I'll tell you how to pronounce that yes. one. It's Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, and it's and this last one is uh, Ahas Ahasuerus. It's a Ahasuerus, and it. Uh, the only reason I know these names is I. You, these names are in other books too, and I did yes. some studies uh, in the book of Haggai, and I've also gone through Ezra, Ezra quite a bit. There's a lot of interesting things happened during that time, and a lot of interesting names. I'm not going to get into that right now, but these names mean things, and they're whole, they're whole sermons by themselves. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then Tatani, Tatani is another one of those that are difficult. So, I'll leave you with the other two. <laughs> Sorry. I got the easy ones out of that. <laughs> I'm glad you did some studies on those guys because those names are, if you think they sound hard to pronounce, you should see the way they're written. Well, they're definitely in a uh, 17th century spelling. <laughs> yes. So the other, the final two characters, main characters that you'll see is Ezra, of course, and then Darius. Yeah, and Darius is a king and you will get to talk about him uh, at length. He's not the only one who shows up, but he comes up a lot. Uh, speaking of names, you know, I'll just go ahead, we'll just go ahead and say this now. Ezra's name has a meaning, and the word, the name Ezra means help. It could mean God's help, help from God, but it literally just means help. And uh, that's exactly what Ezra did for the Lord. Uh, who was the book of Ezra written to, Austin? So it was written to the Jews living in in the Jerusalem area at the time of the restoration. And it was really written with the purpose of encouraging the people who had returned from exile to continue that work that Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah had started. Right. So the, uh, the, just to summarize the book of Ezra, Ezra was a priest. He was also a scribe, which is why I believe personally that either Ezra or one of his scribes mm -hmm. wrote this because this is what Ezra did uh, for many years before he became a central figure uh, in that story. He was a scribe. So he was a guy who was used to writing, probably enjoyed it and was very good at it, skilled. Uh, if you want to call it that, but just to summarize the book of Ezra, uh, you know, the first six and a half chapters cover the return of all those exiled from Israel and the rebuilding of the temple will also be covered in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and then it's Ezra's return. And, you know, Nehemiah had the responsibility basically of the outside of the physical rebuilding. Ezra's main focus is going to be on community restoration and community rebuilding, changing people's hearts and working to change relationships and do some other things in the community through that. So a lot of neat stuff happens in the book of Ezra. We cannot wait again to get there. It's going to be exciting. Uh, as we, oh, go ahead, Austin. One more thing here. So Jesus in the pages. Jesus on every page. And so, of course, there is always a way to find Christ. And so in Ezra, you have the three leaders, Rubel, Nehemiah, and Ezra, when leading the people, confronting their sins, rebuilding the temple and its function, and its functioning, carrying out moral reforms among other practices, they prefigured Christ, who came and accomplished all these things, but completely imperfectly, extending not only Amen. to the people of Israel, but also to Gentiles around the world. Absolutely. Amen. Well, that's good, ain't it? <laughs> Guys, what's going to wrap us up right here for this little overview of these three books? And we appreciate your time and uh, hope that it's been something that maybe spark a little interest in you to go study the Word of God for yourself. Uh, and if you want to wait around on us to get there, please do that and join us as we overview the other books. These things are a lot of fun and we're excited about it. So come along for the ride with us. We'd be glad to have you. I was listening to one of the uh, other podcasts and I realized that I didn't call out the full email the last one of the last times. It's something I've been forgetting to do or just out of confusion, idiocy, or whatever you want to call it. 
But uh, if you have questions, comments, or things that you'd like for us to cover, we'd be glad to talk about those things. Uh, you just got to send us a message. Uh, if you have our cell phone number, you'd be, you're more than welcome to text us. Uh, but if you want to email them in, send those to Mud Creek Pastor, all lowercase, Mud Creek Pastor at gmail.com. Mud Creek Pastor at gmail.com. We'd be glad to talk about anything that you want to talk about when we can. Uh, get it on the list or the schedule to do so. But again, we thank you for listening. Uh, Austin, anything you want to say before we head out the door? No, I think that's it. Well, all right, guys. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for joining us on the Meat of the Creek miniseries. I am the father. I am the son-in-law. Thank God for the Holy Ghost.